Happy Monday morning. Let's do some science. We are in chapter three of the science book called The Weight of Air. And along with that, you're going to be looking at worksheet number eight, science number eight. So I'm going to read a little bit of the chapter to you, and then you're going to read the rest of it for yourself and complete the worksheet. So it says, how much does air weigh? You might think that is a strange question because you think that air doesn't weigh anything. You might think that you can't see or feel air, so it must not weigh anything. However, you would be wrong. Although air is very light, it still has mass and weight. As you learned in the previous lesson, the air is made up of mostly nitrogen and oxygen atoms. So if you think about it, atoms weigh something. You just have to get a lot of them for you to be able to tell how much it weighs. Each of these atoms weighs a tiny amount, but when you add up the weight of all the molecules in a cubic foot of air, a cubic foot means a cube, like a dice shape, a cube that's a foot on each side, so a foot by a foot, a foot this way and a foot front to back. A cubic foot of air weighs about one-tenth of a pound. And when you add up all the weight of all the air molecules in the atmosphere, the air surrounding the whole planet weighs about five million billion tons. That's a lot of air. The air has weight because gravity is pulling down on the air molecules. You know how they say that astronauts don't have any weight out in space, they just float because there's no gravity pulling them down toward a planet? Well, the air molecules have weight because gravity's pulling them down and gravity's holding them to our planet so they can't fly away out into space. That's how we keep our atmosphere. This means that air molecules are pressing against us all the time. In fact, the air presses on our bodies with about 14.7 pounds of pressure per square inch when we are at sea level. Square inch, little square, 14 pounds pressing down on you, on your head, on your shoulders. And pressing in from the sides, too, not just on your head. So let's look at this. If you want to draw a little stick figure, sorry for the shaky camera, guys. This is handheld photography. Look at the ceiling. Look at the timeline. Now we're going to look at the board. Here you are. Stick figure person. Hey, hi, here I am. And above you is a bunch of air all sitting on top of your head all the way out into space and all that air is pushing down on you pushing down on your arms but also on the sides it's pushing in on you all around 14.7 pounds for every square inch Little square inch, not very big. So what does the book say? Why don't we feel this pressure on our bodies? God designed our bodies to push out with about the same amount of pressure that the air is pushing in. So we don't feel the weight of the air around us. So I'm going to have you read the rest of the chapter. But I want you to think about a couple of things you might have experienced. Have you ever gone up on a mountain. And as you're going up, your, air, your ears start to feel like they're getting plugged up or something's pushing on them. And then you yawn or you chew some gum and your ears go pop. That's because the pressure up on the top of the mountain is less than the pressure down here in the valley. And so the pressure inside your body is different than the pressure outside your body. But when your ears pop open, then the pressure gets equal on the inside and the outside again. The same experience happens when you go up in an airplane. 
The airplane is pressurized, and that's one of your questions. Why do they have to pressurize an airplane when it goes up to 30,000 feet, 35,000 feet, higher than the top of any mountain on the whole Earth? Why do our ears pop? Why do they have to pressurize the cabin? And they do pressurize it, but not enough to keep your ears from popping. So I want you to think about that. Read the rest of the chapter. Read the fun facts. And I'll come back later with another assignment. Bye.